Welcome to the ATS Fully Engaged on the Rocks podcast. I'm your host, Mitchell Land. I'm here with my co-hosts, Tony and Evan. Hello. Hello. And we are here to talk to you about all things ATS. This is a new endeavor for us. Um, we're hoping it kind of takes off. Actually, we're not hoping it kind of takes off. It will take off. And today we're going to talk about how we got here, introduce ourselves, introduce what the whole ATS FE or ATS Fully Engaged uh, idea is and will be about and will include. And then we'll kind of go into what the, will probably be the normal podcast uh, format. And uh, hopefully you, you will enjoy that. So without further ado, I think we will just introduce ourselves really quick. Well, of course, we won't do this every time because hopefully we won't have to. But who wants to go first? Tony? Yeah, Evan? I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and go first. Uh, I'm Tony. Um, Tony Kinner. I uh, got into ATS because actually because of Mitch. Um, I was looking for a tactical system. Um, I was trying ASL, ATS, kind of like all of them. I got like all the intro starter sets for like all of them at one point and uh, uh, found this sweet spot of, of ATS. And then I let Mitch like beat me up several times. So I don't know how to play. <laughs> so, uh, but no, it's, uh, it's kind of that, that nice sweet spot of enough detail you know, fun, some good, some randomness in the die rolls and just, just all in all good fun when it comes down to it. Cool. Evan. Well, I was on a guild on BGG and I was looking around at games. I was kind of at a low point for, for buying games. And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty happy with my collection, which are, you know, famous last words. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so for some reason I had, done a search on BGG for DNB and Foo, and all of a sudden I see this game, tactical level game, squad level game on DNB and Foo. I was like, oh no, here, here it goes, here we go. So I'm like, well, okay, it's just one game, it's a system, it's old. So I started looking into it, and I'd, I'd heard, I'd seen the ATS way on, on the BGG page, but there's like nothing on there. So I was like, eh, okay, whatever, it's, it's out there. Yeah. So then I finally make my way to Critical Hits website and start looking around at what they have, and I realized there's there's French Algeria and there's a couple couple Korean modules. I was like, oh man, okay, this is this is trouble. This is <laughs> I already see where this is heading. <laughs> but I started to you know look into it a little bit more, and you know sometimes people aren't aren't super thrilled with uh, how things roll out when they when they buy things from Critical Hit. So I was like, okay, well, is this going to be like an issue? So I went and posted on this, on this other guild where I was pretty new at the time, and and so this this guy, I don't know, some guy named. <laughs> game, the game designer he's like I'm like is it worth it and he's like I think it is and that's all he put and I was like okay well I, <laughs> he was a respected game designer I had heard him on podcasts like on the interviews so I was like okay yeah this guy this guy seems like he knows what he's talking about I'll, <laughs> I'll jump on board and, and yeah so I started with a simple not simple but a, a World War II module just to kind of get my feet wet see if I liked it of course, even before I had played that, I had already ordered more stuff. And yeah, here, here, here we are, two years later. Like a, like a good war gamer, right? Yeah. 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 That's funny. Mitch. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Mitch, uh, you know, my ATS, I go way back because I'm much older than these two guys. But, um, you know, I actually started with <laughs> ASL and it, it was okay. I mean, there, you know, nothing wrong necessarily with ASL. It just seemed like a lot of rules over it for me. And then my buddy Marty introduced me to ATS, and I just fell in love with the whole I um, not the I go, but the impulse system over over ASL and the very rote SOP. And you know, from then it was just kind of kind of history. Um, it's, and just to clarify, I have no idea what I'm talking about, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like, I mean, I really like ATS. Um, and that's kind of how I started. I think I, kind of the same story as, as you having after Marty kind of introduced me to it. I'm like, okay, well, I'll start with this one little World War II module. And then all of a sudden I sold all my ATS or ASL stuff and then used those proceeds to buy into a bunch of ATS things, you know, and I would buy, I mean, I've been known to buy people's, oh, I'm getting out of ATS. Well, I'll buy all that. <laughs> and then, you know, yes. either turn around, repackage it, sell it or give it away or whatever to get more guys involved. Because I think at the end of the day, I want more people to, to play with. You know, I think it's one of those games that you don't have to spend a lifetime playing, right? It's not a, what do they call that? It's not a uh, lifetime, uh, lifestyle game. game. Yeah, a lifestyle, lifestyle game. <laughs> yeah. See, you knew the term. 
you know, it's not a lifestyle game. Um, you can pick it up and yeah, you're going to dive into the rule book if you come across some weird situation, you know, some, either some terrain you haven't really dealt with that commonly or, you know, just some, how does a gun duel work? You know, um, that, that, but you can do that in any, almost any game anyway. So, but at the end of the day, you can just pick up an ATS game and start playing and have a, have a ton of fun. And even if you get it wrong, who cares, right? You had a, you had a blast playing. So that's pretty much it. Um, and then obviously, you know, we've, we've all kind of been involved in the ATS community, um, somewhat, obviously I've been involved deeply for a while. Um, you guys, as you just kind of mentioned, Tony, I played Tony a lot actually. And then Evan, yeah. you know, we played a couple of times and I, you know, you guys are both in the tournament. So we kind of just figured we'd get together and put some content out for ATS and that's how ATS fully engaged itself was born. Um, so ATS fully engaged is going to be, it's going to encompass a lot of different things. Um, so we're going to have this podcast irregularly scheduled, you know, uh, may not be all three of us, maybe two or even one or whatever. We're going to have, um, and we'll get, we'll get a little bit more detailed, I guess. So I guess we can just go into that now. Right. So I think yeah. the first thing is, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so tell me why you talk about, YouTube. Well, um, if you don't know, I actually have a YouTube. I'm uh, Tony's Board Life. Uh, I've put some ATS stuff up and actually I've gotten quite a bit of... Uh, to, to be clear, Tony, that's B-O-A-R-D, not B-O-R-E-D. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Tony, I thought know. maybe that was a pun about... about <laughs> playing board after the board. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. It's uh, Tony's Board Life as in board, as in board game. So, um, but so, uh, so... I've been doing quite a bit of content and I thought that, Hey, this is something really, you know, we could really help expand the ATS. Cause the one comment I hear about a lot about ASL is that how, you know, that rule book is almost intimidating when it comes down to, <clears throat> um, you know, and, you know, so I just tried to thought that, Hey, this would be a good idea to do some stuff. And then Mitch and then Evan, we we're all a part of this. So, we're adding into the content. So we're going to have a YouTube channel. It's uh, ATS fully engaged. Um, uh, we'll do a link uh, at the bottom uh, of this you know, if you need to run across it. Um, but we will have a YouTube page that will have a variety of different things on it from gameplay uh, to tutorials to just kind of basic conversations, as well as this podcast as well will be on there uh, to, uh, to listen to um, at, at your leisure uh, on your YouTube. <laughs> so, but we're doing, we're planning on doing a lot of different content on that. Uh, anywhere from, like I said, from tutorials to playthroughs to examples of play and things like that. And don't forget, we're going to, we're going to borrow the term. So everybody, hopefully if you're an ATS player, you know, battlefield walk around is the little piece of paper that comes in there, but we're, we'll be doing those. We'll go through a module or particular and go to kind of do a deep dive uh, through, through there. And we're going to call that the battlefield walk around. So we'll have those on the team. Yeah. It's, it's not, going to be not an unboxing. Not yeah, an it's not an unboxing. <laughs> not it's, unboxing. We well, actually, well, we'll we don't talk have boxes. About what in there. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and well, well, that's also a, a yeah. Not an unzip locking. Yeah. Not not a, a, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But yeah, uh, the intent is to do, right. The intent is to do a deep dive on the components, right? So, and take a look Record at the maps that. and a little bit more yep. detail on the maps. And, hey, this yep. looks like it could be interesting. And uh, this scenario, looking at the scenario is a little bit deeper to kind of see out. So that way, if you are interested and you're kind of interested in a particular module um, and you're kind of curious what's in it, because, yes, we have some issues with, with the website, and, you know, from the, mm. from the 90s, early 2000s, mm. I think, more than the 90s. Um, and you just, sometimes you don't get, know what you get. And so in this case, this will be a little bit of deep dive as well as a, uh, little, um, at least you'll get to see what comes with each, each module. Right. And also what, what doesn't come, what you need to play, you know, yeah. for encounters or whatever. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty common for, yeah. Uh, yeah, for ASL. Right. Exactly. That's important. Yeah. Cause most, I'd say most ATS, maybe I'm wrong. You guys can correct me, but I think most ATS modules have a VATS module, but Definitely, there's a good chunk that do not. Uh, you know, I haven't counted, and Scott might actually know more uh, than I than I do, and hopefully, we'll get Scott on here to talk about that. But um, oh yeah, yeah, there are a ton of them. The thing is, some of them are only available from the CHMB, so you have to be a member there. And then, you know, I posted a PDF that gives you a direct link, but if you're not a member, the link won't work. And then Scott's got a Google Drive, I think, that he maintains, which all this is available. Short pause while we discuss 
something else is available on a, on the ATS Discord channel, which is not necessarily ATS if be affiliated, right? Um, mm -hmm. But uh, there, you can get to a lot of resources there anyway. But uh, you know, speaking speaking of the the website and how to get started, I think it might be a good segue into. I mean, I call it a blog, Evan. I don't know what you, you want to call it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you talk it. about it. Okay. Well, it's called a blog, but that sounds good to me. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be mainly a blog and at first, for sure, just kind of similar things to the videos. But if you like your, uh, like your, take your content in written form. Yeah. So it'll just be tutorials and I'll also do kind of very deep dive scenario analyses, maybe too deep. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see if people like this. Uh, but, and also trying to look at kind of the step beyond you know, these are the rules. Here's how to play. Now go play. And, you know, getting past the point where, okay, what was that rule again? Uh, and getting to the point where we were a lot in the tournament that there's all sorts of interesting interactions. And if you play enough, you start to pick up on them and you, you think about, think it through and you're like, oh, okay, I should do this or not do that or all these sorts of different little tactical issues. And so well, I think I'm excited yeah, to just get those out there and see what people, see what people, how people respond and what the other people come up with as well. Yeah, and I think I think when we were talking about it at one point, I think I heard you say something about how it goes beyond just the how and gets into the why and why you might want to do something. Right. Yeah. So I think that'll be good and useful. Yeah. Hopefully, people will get a lot. Of, they'll get a lot out of that, and so they can, you know, so they're not like sitting down fresh every time and like, how do I play ATS? And not that you know, like you said, we talked about, it's a lot easier than ASL, but it's still. Right. You know, not for able to understand what's going on all the time. So. Yeah, so yeah. a couple of things. We're going to really try to uh, address all the learning styles that are out there. And uh, mm -hmm. for, for those Did we mention that Tony is a teacher? I am a teacher, yeah. <laughs> I, was about to say. I, I am a teacher. So. Oh, sorry, I stole your thunder. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, so we really, I as a teacher, I know that people learn different visually, auditorially, um, as well as kinesthetically of doing, as well as reading. So one of the things we wanted to do is definitely put as much as we can in different ways as possible. So, it, right. you know, if, well, you if you don't get it one way, maybe another way will, will help you out. Right. And, and, you know, I mean, to be, to be honest too, people sometimes have the ability to listen to a three hour long video of a playthrough of a scenario that, I mean, not, not saying we have one of those yet, but we will probably. Right. Um, as opposed to, Hey, maybe we did a five minute quick take or hot take podcast. Hey, here's your, here's your five or 10 minutes. Go, go get some info. And, you know, if you can circle back around, we might point out and hopefully we'll do a lot of crosstalk. Right. So, so Evan might write an article or I might write an article or whatever, and, and, and there'll be a companion video or vice versa or something like that. Right. And so we'll kind of, like you were saying, Tony, hit, hit all the, yeah, all the um, cylinders on that one. So. A lot of the, a lot of the heavier topics, um, just to think of mortars and bots and things like right. that are, are good in different ways. Uh, I am definitely a visual or, or uh, something. I have to do something to really learn it or, or see it to learn it. So that's where the YouTube comes in great for me because I can actually teach that way uh, because that's the way I learn. So, mm -hmm. you know, so that's why I, I definitely the YouTube channel is definitely to go. But I also enjoy reading um, a lot of the uh, stuff Evans put out. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea because he definitely goes into more of the tactics um, while I still kind of in that rules, uh, getting, you know, I, I get well, most of the standard rules and Mitch, I know you've said it, we, you use the, you use 90% of the rule or what is it? Um, 10% of the rules, 90% of the time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get it right sooner or later. Right. But in, in, in ATS is definitely that way. It's always that strange rule that you're always like, Oh, what was that again? So, right. Yeah. Right. So, and then. The final, you know, the final arm, I guess, if you want to call it, of, of the whole ATS fully engaged thing will be this pod, this particular podcast, which we're calling On the Rocks. And there's a specific reason for calling it On the Rocks. And we're going to get to that right now because the most important question that we'll probably start with on every ATS FP On the Rocks is, what are you drinking? Tony, what are you drinking? I am drinking a Glenlivet Caribbean Reserve uh, scotch, single malt scotch. Nice. Uh, it's really good. It's got a... It's got, it definitely has a little bit of a sweeter flavor than most scotches do because it is aged in rum barrels. So it's definitely okay. a little bit. That's what makes it Caribbean. I was going to ask what makes it Caribbean. Yep. Yep. Oh, right. yep. 
and uh, must be it must be the molasses, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> we, we figured out. We learned today that nine, what is it? Ninety percent of all rums are you know made from us. I think they're all made from molasses. Yeah. yeah. So well, unless it's some weird thing that they just call rum, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I am uh, drinking. I actually had purchased a, uh, a tray that actually makes uh, the uh, solid balls of ice. And I use that and I've actually, I need, to get one of those. I need to get one of those. And they're cheap too. So. How, does it, how does it work? Cause I've never actually seen one. Like, do you just, you know, how do you get the, how? it actually seals it. So like the okay. uh, top rubber part goes into yep. like the bottom plastic part. So it kind of seals uh, it. So that's how okay. it Yeah. It does a so phenomenal you, job. You, oh, Cause I'm sitting here thinking, how do you get a ball of water <laughs> into the freezer? So that it freezes. <laughs> Yeah, just Google it on Amazon. I mean, yeah. and, and they're really good. And it's nice because they stay around for a while. And, of course, with nice. all scotch, you're supposed to drink it with a little bit of water uh, to kind of mellow it out a little bit to let the flavors come out. And I'll tell you what, you pour it over the ice ball, and it's just it, the flavors come out right, almost right sings, away. It sings, yeah. Just to be clear, I think they mean a drop of water, not a big-ass ice ball. <laughs> <laughs> Well, usually I still have ice left over. Um, yeah. I, can, uh, it, I have to drink it quickly. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. Devin, what do you got? Oh, man. Well, that's I can't compete with that. I'm uh, yeah. having some, <laughs> some stomach issues earlier, so I just wanted some Angostura bitters and, and some uh, soda water. That's uh, that's holding me down. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, that'll work, right? Well, I was looking forward to my Manhattan for the first podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't happen. That's all right. We'll forgive you. You'll just have to make up for a double next time. Yeah, exactly. What do yeah. you got going on, Mitch? I am drinking a little concoction I call a TKD. So it's one of those weird things. I <clears throat> I have this uh, app on my phone. I think it's called Mixology. And uh, I was just kind of one day I was searching around for something to drink. I'm like, well, what do I have? So you, in this app, you can go in and put here, I have this and this and this and this. What can I make, right? So I happen to have some cherry vodka that I had bought off the sale aisle because <laughs> you know, apparently nobody wanted it. And uh, some scotch. Why not? <laughs> yeah, some scotch. And of course, you know, everybody got club soda and stuff. So I put all that in there. I'm like, wow, you can make this thing called the Wiley Coyote. I'm like, okay, except I don't have cherry syrup, which is fine with me because I don't like, that's just pure sugar as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. So, so let me back up. I had I just put in that I had vodka, right? But it came up with this whole well, if you if you, you can make a wild Cody if you have cherry syrup, I'm like, well, I have cherry vodka that's frozen. I wonder if that would be a good substitute. So I mix it's two ounces of scotch, so I make mine doubles normally. It's one, two ounces of scotch, two ounces of cherry vodka, splash of club soda to taste, right? And then dirty cherries. And that's what I've got. So I'm, I call it a TKD. Because, you know, my, my nickname on online properties is usually Toad Killer Dog. Um, so I just call it a TKD because it's a variation of that. But uh, I put it over. Unfortunately for you, Tony, I put it over whiskey rocks. With, they, they don't melt. They're just cold. Yeah, I was looking yeah. at some of those at some point in time, for sure. Yeah, I've tried them. They At least in a tropical climate, they, they do not work. <laughs> no, yeah, a little too warm. Uh, in, a winter, in a winter drink, though, they might, right. they might make. Well, so the thing about this drink is it, it needs to be cold. So that's why I keep, I said, like I said, I keep that cherry vodka on ice. Um, right. The scotch is not, but the cherry vodka is because it kind of needs to be cold to just kind of um, mix right. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, but it, it goes down real smooth is the problem. Is it almost too yeah. smooth? Too dangerous. Yeah. It's a little dangerous. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's good. And so what's funny is, you know, I tried it once without the dirty cherries. And it's amazing that the dirty cherries actually make a difference. Because I guess the, the whatever's on there kind of leaches off into the drink, you know, mm-hmm. and changes the flavor profile a little bit. And I, without it, it's it's okay. It's not bad, but it's a little bit harsher when you put the dirty cherries in it smooths it over and that's where it gets dangerous. Cause you're like, Oh yeah, I think I'll have two more of these. And then you're, you know, flat on the floor. So <laughs> I think the drink I feel that goes down the smoothest for me is a Negroni where I, I, oh, I love a good Negroni. I have so yeah. good. I don't know why people don't like them, but, but yeah, yeah, I'll have one. And I'll be like, I feel like I didn't drink anything. Let me go have mm-hmm. another of them. And yeah, yep. It's all downhill from there. Well, you know, I wonder, cause they're a little bitter. So I wonder if people just don't like, Negroni's yeah. that, right? So if you like an IPA, which Tony had that conversation a little bit, right? Is 
you might you probably will like Negronis, right? Because um, they're just to me at least the ones I get. They're a little they're on the little bit on the bitter side, not hugely on the bitter side, but a little bit on the bitter side. But that's why they're so good. I mean, they're mu- I would exactly. say I love them, but yeah, I would say they're much more balanced than IPAs because they also oh, have yes. sweet from the vermouth. Exactly. So it's, it's strange to me. I don't. I like. I, it tastes bitter to me, but sweet at the same time. So it, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, a it's a good, it's a good, it's a good balance. I agree. And that's why, well, but it has to be made right. Right. So you can get a bad Negroni and that could turn you off. That's true. Too. You can get a bad but anything I, that'll turn you off. That's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Good point. Exactly. Yeah. I don't understand how bartenders can't make these drinks or just people at their houses. You just measure and you follow the instructions just, right. and that's it. They're not, they're not, like, it's not like you're baking a cake or, <laughs> or you know, like, cooking a something yep. crazy. But. And welcome, we welcome to the very first episode of ATS Mixology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is going to be every episode. Yeah, you're right. There will be there will be a mixology segment. I'm sorry, you're going to have to deal with it. But uh, but the, you know the one thing I would say is you know people need to just experiment because I, I, I was for the longest time I'm, I'm like I'm not making mixed drinks. I just I'll fuck it up. And I'll screw. Sorry, this is an explicit podcast. I'll screw it up. Um, <laughs> is it okay? I wasn't sure yeah. if we were allowed. To well, it'll be marked explicit. I don't I don't think we're gonna. Be you know, it's not like don't be forced to don't feel forced yeah. to throw stuff out. But if you happen to slip, it's okay. Um, but I, I was always just afraid because I'm like, well, I'll screw it up. I won't like it. I won't, you know. And then finally, I just did it. I was like, okay, this is fun. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make something up. You know, like this is the lady, right? I'm just gonna make something up because this is what I have. You know, I don't have yeah. an extensive bar. So that sounds like when I tried uh, Jameson and Dr Pepper. That actually turned right. out pretty well. I called it a Dr Jameson. Oh, jeez. Wait, are we going to now have our origin stories for how we started mixing drinks? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Ah. Yeah, All right. I probably ruined that. I probably ruined, ruined that Jameson by doing that. But, you know, yeah, well, I, I think I was into it already by so. that point. I don't think that was my first. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't your first round. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely not my first round. So, yeah. Nice. It's okay, Tony. We won't, we won't judge, you, judge you for ruining the Jameson. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to ruin Jameson. I mean, it's Jameson. Yeah. I, <laughs> I like good Jameson shot on St. Patty. I've actually found some other Irish uh, Irish whiskeys I like a little bit better, but mm. yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay. So so that's what to expect um, from ATS Fully Engaged. That's what to expect on this podcast. You just heard that. Um, it's probably just going to get worse from here, so if you want to tune out now, don't, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, uh, the the whole intent of the, the podcast, and you guys chime in if you think uh, think I'm wrong or incorrect. Oh, or I'm going to say you're wrong thing. right now just to there you make sure get it out of there. Just to so, get your point yeah. Yeah. made. <laughs> right. Um, you know, it's really, it's really three dudes sitting around talking, mostly ATS, um, and just having a good time. And, and uh, that's why we call it On the Rocks, because it's not meant to be high production value, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So we're just going to, we're going to shoot this area. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to talk ATS a lot or little or whatever, but you know, it'll, it'll be in there for sure. So um, I don't know if you guys want to add to that or just kind of go into what I think, I think the biggest topic we should, we might want to talk about. No, let's, 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 let's hit it. Let's, let's get it. into it. Yeah. All right. So I think, I mean, oh, Evan, I'll let you speak before Tony overrides you there. So. About the next topic. Yeah. About the tournament? No. Did, did you want to talk more about the podcast? Or you want to talk about oh, oh, no, spill no, beans? Think... Spill the beans and talk about the tournament. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I already spilled the beans. Yeah, yeah, so, so I guess we better yeah, move so forward then. Yeah. I guess we better move on. Next segment. Somebody, somebody, make a note of the time. So hopefully you guys are at least most of you listening to this. All five of you are aware that there's a tournament going on. Um, you know, I put the call out a while ago. Jeez, I don't even remember when we started. It doesn't really matter, but it was a while ago now. It's been yeah, well, maybe six yeah. maybe six months, maybe more. Yeah. Well, and so part of that kind of kind of so let me let me back up just a little bit, right? I put the call out, let's let's go with six months ago, hoping to get a, a bigger maybe buy in to the whole idea of a tournament. Um but I won't say I'm disappointed. I'm a little bit let down maybe there's only, you know, twelve people wanted to play. Really eleven plus me wanted to play um but that's okay you know it's a first shot so you know i've come to terms with it but it, the problem or i guess the issue is what it would maybe do is because i think my initial thought was that if we went with it's like say 20 guys showed up right you can't do a round robin tournament with 20 guys it's too much so 
I was going to do just single limb. Sorry, you're going to be in a bracket. If you lose, you're gone, um, which is harsh, but that's the way tournaments usually run, right? But because there were only 12 guys, I'm like, well, let's do a round robin. We'll have five rounds. Everybody will play each other. And then from there, we'll do semifinals and finals. So really what happened is the, the, the amount of people that turned out is what drove the tournament format. And that's why it's kind of taken so long, right? If we were doing single limb, we'd probably be close to, I mean, it probably would have still taken mostly the same amount of time, but we'd be closer to being done, I think. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, you play your game and you're done. Um, I think, I think overall I'm pretty happy with it. Um, but I think I'll, I'll stop there and let you guys kind of talk about what you see from the tournament and what you see going on and how you feel about it. All right, Tony, this sounds like your moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice one. Throw it. Hey, the bus is backing up. Anyways, uh, no, I actually, um, I'm kind of glad it was around Robin. Uh, it got me more in, in game time play. And the one thing about any game, uh, which, you know, a lot of war gamers have the issue of, you know, you play a game once and you really don't get to really enjoy the game because you're generally through the first rule, through the first game you're learning the rules. So it takes a little while to actually get into it. So the more you can actually play, uh, the more you're going to get into it. And with ATS, it's, it's one of those games that definitely you need uh, more multiple gameplays, not of this, not always of the same scenario, but definitely multiple gameplays uh, to get, learn the tactics and, and to get comfortable with rules where you're starting to think more of here's the, here's the game. What do I need to do then? Okay. What rule was this? Where, how, how can I move or anything like that? Uh, so this gave me a chance to play a lot more um, and play against other people as well, which was a lot of fun. And you, you learn a lot from playing different players. I mean, uh, getting beat up by Mitch, you know, you know, once a month is is not always a good thing. I like to get beat up by a bunch of different people. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have to this podcast is explicit. But, right. but, but I definitely, uh, enjoyed that part. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, me and Evan played and, and, and we had a lot of fun. Evan took a little different route and, and uh, I was, I, I started my move a little bit too late. I realized. Yeah. And, and so, um, Evan was able to, to win that, that match, but, uh, you know, it was, I forget which, which scenario did you guys play? We played the first one. It, or the bringing, building the houses, oh, the houses. That's one. right. Yeah. Grabbing, grabbing some grounds and houses. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Subject of future mind. scenario analysis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, so uh, Evan, what did, what did you, what do you think so far? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm with you for sure. I mean, making it, well, let me step back. I have a kind of a different perspective, I think, than most people on the tournament. Uh, I don't know from, I guess from like playing sports and playing other competitive games, like, you know, poker or chess or whatever. I'm like, all right, this is, there's honor on the line, not just honor, there are prizes, there are prizes. To be won. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I heard that, I was like, okay, well, it's time to get serious. So my process and my uh, perspective, probably a little bit different compared to other people's, which is fine. But yeah, I won. I mean, I, yeah, I'm not like super cutthroat, but I want to win and I want to play well. I want to play well. And that's kind of more important. And right. I used to play well, and it's definitely helped a lot to like to learn, as Tony was saying, the game a lot better. Sorry, Mitch. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say I think I think what you said was kind of key, especially in ATS, right? I mean, I I really like your approach, and I'm assuming it's going to be an article or at least something that we talk about in the future more in depth. But I like your approach of okay, well, here's the scenario. Here are the and I'll, I'll just kind of break down a couple of right here are the vehicles involved or so let me go look at those vehicle capabilities here's the terrain involved let me go look at the terrain here are the special rules that might be involved let me go look at those rules and kind of break them down and see how i can use those and i just i think it's i think it's a brilliant way to approach right now if you're just doing a pickup game whatever right but right um, from yeah. a tournament perspective i think i think that's great so yeah and it's actually oh, maybe you look at least ahead of the head and not just wait till the tournament day uh, to start, right. you know, so so right. it's it's definitely one of those things that the tournaments made me think a little bit deeper in prep. I mean, uh, I'm going to be playing uh, my last my I think my last round here um, mm. within the next week, and uh, I've definitely sorted out how or at least starting to sort out of exactly okay. I don't know which side I am yet, but if I'm this side, this is my plan. If I'm this side, this is my plan. But mm -hmm. as, as they all say, you know, plans are great mm -hmm. until first contact, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, my, my last game that I played, I, I just, I just couldn't do anything. My roles were not even, 
you know, I was rolling one or tens and, and my opponent was rolling ones and mm-hmm. there was just not much I could do on that one. It, it got beat. I got beat pretty heartily. Um, yeah, and I did make some questionable setup moves, uh, something I would never do again. And, and that's the key thing is you do learn quite a bit playing with tournaments. Um, you know, I went in, you know, hoping to win. But I've also hope, came in with, uh, okay, well, at least I'm going to learn some stuff because people play differently. Um, a lot of people play solo, and you just don't always, as a solo person, you just don't always see the other potentials out there. So, Right. Yeah, well, yeah. nothing will screw up if playing as like a live opponent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think exactly. the other thing, I think, you know, from talking to people, it was in the tournament, but also in general, I think a lot of people have had bad experiences with you know, people who like they have competitive gear, I'm going to win at all costs right. all, all the time. And like, you know, maybe from a certain other game system, that's <laughs> the same scale. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense to me. You just, you, you know, you can have two gears that one is like, okay, we're just hanging out and I want to play well. And then now I'm going to like try and kill everybody. Like that's, I don't know, I'm not sure why right. that's hard for people to like, to like distinguish those two things. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I agree. And I, I mean, I will say from every game that I have set in upon, what I can tell is there is no hesitation in game of somebody, of an opponent telling him some, you know, like we'll just take an example. Like you haven't maybe mentioned to Tony, hey, that's not how that rule works. Here's how that rule works, even if it benefits Tony. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to put it right. Like I don't want right, to win exactly. because Tony forgot the rules. That's crappy. Exactly. Um, and I think there's been a lot of that, which I think is great um, for sure. And so that, that's that's what I've seen a lot of. And I'm just happy that people are playing online. I mean, I look at, you know, the Vassal thing and there's always there's all a, a VASL game going on. And I want VATS to be up there. Maybe, you know, I'll never approach the, the same. I won't say never. It is unlikely to approach the same mass adoption as ASL, right? But it would be cool just to, to get a community of guys who are willing to do pickup games and get out there and play and recognize that, you know what? Yeah, just ask. I mean, if somebody says no, they're not saying no to you personally. They're just busy, right? So somebody will say yes eventually. Play a game, you know, um, and get ATS up there and running. And the more people we get playing, the better off we're going to be. So, Definitely. I mean, I think that's I think that's in particular has – I mean, we're such a widespread community. You know, I, I'm fortunate. I know at least two ATS players that I can play locally with, arguably three, right? So I can bring it, we can pick it up, we can put it down on the table and play, right? Um, that's not true for everybody, and I get that. But, hey, that's what equalize that playing field, so. Yeah, and, and it kind of one of the other things that, that I would say is definitely, um, you know, playing against – against you, Mitch, I learned a lot. And and as we've talked, um, a lot of it's been in game. It's like, okay, now I know the rules. Now I'm starting to actually, you know, get the tactics down and doing some of that. And it's just neat to see some other people's approaches because, you know, the more people that I can see, the more people that other people play with, the more you can learn from, you know, it's, I went, I definitely went in going, Oh, I got a chance to win this. Well, now I don't, but, uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I've learned so much that if we were to do this and God willing, we do this again, Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I would definitely have a little bit more, okay, well, this is a tournament. I need to take it a little bit more seriously and I need to really prep for this. So, uh, and so I'm really looking forward to, to, to moving forward with it and, and having another tournament for sure. I think a lot of people will probably, not even a lot of people, but the people who play again, I think there might be more people. Yeah. I vote with you. Yeah. 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 And, and, and the other thing is, is that if you guys are nervous about rules, about not knowing how to play as well, it's, we're, we're, it's such a good group that, Hey, we'll help you out. We'll walk you through it and we'll get things taken care of for you. And then you can just, you can learn if you need to, if you need help. If you have questions on the rules, we're, we're not going to be like, Oh no, don't, don't join this. This is for experts by, by all means. It's, it's one of those right. things that we're going to help you out. Um, and you know, from what I've learned is, is that even new people pick up on rules that you may not even have picked up on. So it's it, different perspectives is always, is always a good thing. Right. Well, and to be clear, we have everybody in the tournament from 
straight up newbies to old hands, right? I mean, yeah. And granted, the, the the records probably are showing that, but even the newbies are having fun, which is the point, right? At the end of the day, if you're not having fun, then what are you doing? It's, it's a game, <laughs> right? So. No, I'm going to make my living from it competitive ATS. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In 10 years, the sermon's going to be huge. That price package, I, I'm sure you can sell for at least three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy an agroni for that. All right, there you go. That's all I need. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of funny because I've been keeping Ray. Uh, so those of you who don't know, for whatever reason, Ray Tapio is the owner of Critical Hit. He's the one who, or Critical Hit's the one company that puts out ATS, Advanced System, which you can go to criticalhit.com and find all this stuff. Um, again, spoiler alert, uh, Evan's working on an article about how to get started in uh, ATS. And I'll have a lot of links, I think, to, to that site of what you what do you need to get going. But anyway, I've been keeping Ray apprised of the tournament and, you know, it is one question to me when it's so at the end of round four, we did have, we had at least one guy that was four and oh, one guy that was oh and four. And his question was, well, what do you think is the, um, what separates the oh and four and oh guy from the oh and four guy? And my answer, which I think I got vetted by a couple of folks was basically, obviously rules knowledge comes in that, you know, for sure. Right. If you don't, if you don't know how to play, you're probably not going to do so well. Um, but the, you know, the second thing is even if you know the rules taken in an order of battle, and this goes back to what we were just talking about, Evan, about the way you approach scenarios, right? Taking an order of battle, looking at the terrain and looking at the victory conditions and figuring out, okay, how do I get to the VC, the victory conditions, <laughs> not the Vietcong, how do I get to the victory conditions from what I have in the terrain and what I know my opponent's got and where he's going to start? How do I get from A to B, right? I said, that's the biggest difference is understanding how to utilize good tactics, which I think ATS promotes. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it's still at the end of the day, it's still a game. Yes. There's some gamey stuff. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, it still promotes good tactics. So that, that, that was my answer to him. So I don't know what you guys think about that. But yeah. I think, I think, uh, take like, maybe to, maybe to put it another way, the setup is so important. I mean, I don't know for my, for my limited experience, I don't want to like, <laughs> talk like I actually know what I'm talking about. Just like you don't either. Uh, but yeah, I think the setup is often so important because the, you know, they're very short scenarios for the most part. Man, there's just not a lot of time. You know, if you mess up your place right at the beginning, you can't fix it. Um, then if you even if you can, there's like opportunity fire and yeah. So and especially with the tournament scenarios, you know, there's a bunch of scenarios that were five or six turns, and there's just if you overlook something and you're like, oh, I should have put that guy there. Well, <laughs> you know, right. but, uh, but yeah, I think that's, I mean, it's hard to do. And I think that's one of the, that's one of the good things about the tournament is it forces you to sit down and look at it and kind of plan out. And that makes it easier. I think it'll make it easier, you know, when you're just playing a casual game, you know, you don't have to go through the whole process every time, obviously, you know, mm -hmm. just a casual game, but you can just look at it and be like, okay, well, they're my, they're about my VPs and this is my objectives and you know, this is what I've got. Uh, how do I set up to get there? And it should be a little bit easier to do automatically. And right. Also, hopefully. Right. And, and to be fair, I mean, tournament, I think tournament games are a little bit different, right? Cause uh, to your point, you, you're, it might be friendly, but you really are playing to win. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the other thing too, about some of the tournament scenarios, what Tony was talking about, about, you know, your opponent rolls all tens and you're all, all ones. Right. I, you know, I, I like statistics, so I, I don't, hmm. I don't usually, I don't usually throw the blame on the dice. But I think in tournament scenarios in particular, when they're so short and have so few units, um, you're making so few die rolls that it's hard for something like the law of large numbers to make it all work out. Yeah. Um, you can, you can have a string of bad die rolls, and it really will, it will affect. Right. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I don't know enough about. ATS well, but I mean, statistics. How how much that actually matters, but I think it does matter. As opposed to like a big 12 turn scenario with, you know, 30 squads on a side, that will even out for sure. Well, I mean, I do think it matters. So, I mean, and for those people who don't know me, maybe who are just tuning in and trying to figure out what the hell is this ATS thing, right? I mean, ATS is a D10 system. That's right. uh, the other tactical system, which is 2D6. Well, there's a bell, bell curve with 2D6. It's a known probability curve, right? I mean, D10, you have an equal probability of rolling this uh, of a, a 1 through 0, right? A 1 through 10 on every die roll. Exactly. So it's always 10% chance to roll that die so, or to roll that number. So 
you know, that, I think that certainly plays in, and I think that plays in well to what you're saying as well. If you're, if your opponent happens to get a hot string of ones, which is good, as opposed to your hot string of tens, which is bad, then yeah, that can make, you know, it, in a shorter scenario, that can definitely make a difference. I can, I can testify to that for sure. Because I had, <laughs> yeah, lost, right. I had <laughs> lost, I had lost a crew with a mortar and a full squad before I even got my first impulse. So right. and now, granted, some of that was just it was bad setup. I missed. A- I was just going to say, let's go back to the previous point that Evan made about setting up your. Yeah. Dice. So the thing is, is, is but <laughs> still on a on a on a rate of three, you know, a fire yeah. rate of three to take out a full squad and a crew. I mean, that's mm. six hits to do that. It's it's one of those things that, yeah, he was rolling pretty well now. I, and I had missed, I had misunderstood some of the the line of sight rules and stuff like that. So that was that was a learning experience, but that wouldn't have really screwed up too much. I mean, and I mean, there were some other mistakes I made, and a lot of it was like, oh, now I know never do that again, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so or hey, I need to put smoke up. So smoke was one of the one things, and it's definitely something that we will get into more detail that I think is underutilized in mm. ATS. Uh, and I don't know about you, Mitch, but or or Evan, but I think uh, the use of smoke is something that I'm starting to use more uh, to help uh, kind of shield some of my mistakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I, I think smoke is hugely critical, and I'm, I'm right there with you that I underutilize it. Yeah, yeah Tony, I think a lot that's people, a yeah. Bother, but go ahead. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, Tony, that's the perfect microcosm of like all the things we're talking about: the setup the uh that knowing the rules well like the last sight and then mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the bad luck like if you get that trifecta and then right. yeah because setup can actually negate some of the bad luck it really can um, absolutely it, and and sometimes i do get a little more aggressive than i probably should as a defender <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta let things go and and, and i think in and mitch you can attest to this but i think the one thing that I that if we had a little bit better of a, a time or, or more of a time thing to to do a flip, so you play one scenario and you mm-hmm. flip and then oh, see how sure. things go. Uh, right. And, and it's just those games are so sometimes can be so long that flipping that just isn't like a realistic thing unless you want a tournament to go like two years. So, right. So, but right. it's one of those things that it's like, okay, I've learned how to do this and, and that's, and I've really learned how to do some of the uh, better tactics by doing that. Me and Mitch will play a scenario and then we'll flip sides. And so mm-hmm. I'll learn from what you do and, and, but I'll tweak it. I won't do the exact same thing. Right. You know, cause I want to say, okay, well, what if I did this instead of <laughs> that, you know, but again, it's just watching and learning. Um, and I love jumping in on other games and that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's so interesting is you get to see the more people you see play, the more you do learn and you, the more you do kind of, Oh, okay. By osmosis, right. just by watching. Yeah. Well, it's just—it's always interesting to see how somebody else takes that same situation and does something radically different, right? Oh, that's, that's not what I would do, right? <laughs> what are you thinking? Yeah, you one of the dogs well, going on in the background. Now. <laughs> one of the interesting things about um, that first grabbing the houses is—is is Evan. All of all the games, you did something different than anybody else did. Uh, which is actually what I would have done as well. Everybody else tried to go across, basically across the, an open field with a machine gun up on the hill. They tried to do something crazy is what everyone else <laughs> yeah. tried to do. And, but yet yeah, you, you, you take that line of sight if you were to go south and go along a road. And you kind of had to do deal with some mines. But that after looking at the rules, again, where the rules comes in, after looking at the rules – you know, you realize, oh, they're not that bad. It just takes a, an extra impulse just to get by and just to make sure that they're not going to blow up your tank. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that scenario, that first scenario was a, that was a lot, that was a cool one. That, like, such a, such a tiny scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that was a good, that's like, a, that was a super good example of that kind of thing where it's like, I think people, most people didn't realize, and I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, right, how do mine, how do mines work? So I went and read right. and I kept reading. I was like, that's really, you just pick it up when it's in a road? No. Right, okay. that's the crazy part, right? I mean, you just, yeah. So look, look forward to the article and the, and the, I think we're going to have a playthrough on that. 
So that's you know, a super interesting scenario. So. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, yeah. one that it, you can learn a lot from with just a few mm-hmm. squads, and you can play in one sitting. That's right. that's what's oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. I think the playthrough recording is what maybe maybe an hour, maybe a little more. So it's not bad at all. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Right. And honestly, for such a small scenario, it's got a lot of replay value because you can approach it. I mean, not a ton of replay because there's only a couple of ways to really get the buildings, but there is a couple of different avenues of approach, I should say, that you can take. So, cool. All right. Then the retirement talk, do you think? Yeah, for now. Yep. We'll definitely, once we get a few more steps into the tournament, you know, we'll definitely do kind of a, a good one on that one. So, right. Well, so one of the things I know we want to we want to try to cover are the Friday emailers, and like I said, this is going to be kind of irregularly scheduled podcast. So maybe one Friday emailers come, or four have come. Who knows when we get back together, right? Um, but one of the things we want to just talk about is what what was in the latest, at least the last couple, and then you know <clears throat> anything interesting. If there's nothing interesting, maybe we'll skip it, right? But um, if you don't if you don't know what the Friday emailer is, if you sign up at the CHMB, the Critical Hit Message Board, which I think you can get to from, I'm not sure where you can get to from. You can actually get it from uh, Critical Hit or Tactical Level. From criticalhit.com. Okay, right. He's got a, he's got a couple of web properties you can, you can get to. Um, Basically, I mean, it's a, it's like everything else. It's it's a forum. He's got his own, or I say he, Critical Hit has their own private forum. The CHMB is what's called a Critical Hit Message Board. Um, I think you have to buy a product to be a validated member. I could be wrong on that. Um, no, I think you can just sign up. You just have to make. Can sure you just sign up. You just yeah. have to make sure you're a real person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, like I said, I was reading the latest one. Um, you know, Friday emailers and CHMB with over 1,700, 1,700 discrete products in our catalog. <laughs> that seems like a lot. However, you, they can't cover them all. He says, but you can roll back the clock and you can read all 155 Friday emailers if you want. <laughs> so, anyway. It yeah. just says you have to be a validated member to post, so I don't know what that means. Maybe we'll put a link in the show notes or something. But. Yeah, we'll we'll put a link um, to, to definitely all the all the stuff. We'll be yeah, in the CHMB, you know, it's a pretty good resource. I don't. There's not a lot of posting that gets done there. I think it's been overtaken by a lot of other, you know, Facebook. Um, hopefully, Discord will pick up. Consum World's kind of dead. Nobody really posts there. I haven't seen anything on BGG other than um, I know Evan, you've gone through added some new products, but I, you know, mostly it's a new product, but nobody asks questions there. Right. I think, mm-hmm. I think there's an occasional question on the CHMB. There's a few more questions on Facebook. Um, you know, the, personally, I like discord over Facebook, but the discord it. seems to really jump up and there's a lot of conversations on the discord for sure. Yeah. 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 Definitely. But I, think, anyway. I think a lot of it's easier. It's easier access. Yep. It's on your phone. Uh, most right. people that have discord know how to use it. So I think that's where a lot of, a lot of it is. You know, a lot of gamers are on Discord, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, so we should, we should talk about that a little bit, but yeah. Well, I think for Discord, I mean, the thing with, I mean, Facebook's fine, but for example, for rules questions, it kind of feels like it's more of a process, like I'm making a specific post about this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's not true. You're, it's the same thing that happens in Discord, mm-hmm. but it feels, like, it feels like you're kind of doing this discrete thing. Uh, but the problem is it's not like a forum or something searchable where you can then go back and look through it. So it just ends up, it's basically just discord, but like the chat doesn't like right. go continue it. Uh, so I, yeah, I like kind of the fluidity of, of, uh, of discord and the notifications. And it's not mixed up with, you know, all your other, like, you know, your relatives, cat photos or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's very targeted focused and you can just kind of put it aside or whatever. And I mean, right. I think the problem is there's no, I don't think there's a perfect medium for that, right? Other than calling somebody and asking them the question, right? Um, but you get a lot of that. I mean, a hey, lot I'll of give guys... everybody Mitch's uh, phone yes. number. You can just text him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. So. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the guys that are in Discord and on Facebook, to be honest, right? I mean, they're they're more than willing to ask answer questions, and they will, right? It's just um, getting a hold of them, finding the right answer, getting an answer in time, that kind of thing. It's just, it's just, you know, what it is. But uh, the thing I really like about Discord is it, it will go back to the, what I said earlier is it, if you can't play face to face and you're going to play that, that's uh, ver, um, Vassal ATS, right? Discord is tailor made for that, right? You can get on a channel, you can talk while you play because nothing is worse than playing on bats without having voice comps, right? Oh, let me, let me type what I'm doing another one. <laughs> right. I mean, I don't think I've ever done. Shoot me now. I played. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I learned to play combat commander by getting in one of the first online tournaments. And there was a dude, I want to say he was in Australia. He would not do voice comps. You had to, I don't know. He wouldn't answer the questions, but you had to do, you had to, to type everything in the chat. He'd play the game and you'd have to type everything in the chat. I'm like, oh, like, okay. I'm done. <laughs> Right, I'm out. So, yeah. but I'll tell you what, I learned how to play combat commander, not with him necessarily. That was only one, one of the matches, but um, it was just bizarre. I'm like, okay. I mean, the, you know, Discord probably then Discord. I'm sorry, Discord plus that's probably the next best thing to face to face, right? So, yeah, right. agree. Well, maybe the Australian guy was in the the outback and he didn't. Uh, I'll say, I'll say, yeah, I'm playing in a yeah. CNC tournament, so a Command and Colors tournament, and I've had two people yeah. that would only use, um, and it's not as bad because there's not that much in the, right. in the uh, vessel module for can't, Command and Colors isn't too bad. Uh, but yeah, it sucks having to type. I felt like I was back in the 90s what? again playing games. Yeah, what's, what's no, no, here? No, 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 I will right? tell Those you. Those people are listening to this. They need to stop doing with that and just get on no, voice I will tell you the two that I played were over in Europe, and it was like midnight. And Oh, maybe they couldn't talk. Yeah, oh, they really right. couldn't talk. Yeah, um, I mean, maybe, right? But Yeah, and maybe insane. their English wasn't as fluent. You know, it's not um, like right. Australians don't have that exam. That <laughs> I don't know. Some oh, yes, they do. They, they can't speak English. English. <laughs> yeah. They speak Aussie. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, Vats and and Discord have been have been great for for definitely right. for that idea. Well, I mean, that's uh, Tony and I, right? I mean, yeah, I can play locally, but I played. I've probably played more ATS with Tony than anybody else, right? And that's all Vats. Well, except for when we get together every now and then. Yeah, you know, which we'll, we'll yeah. Um, yeah, the last game I think I was a little inebriated and didn't set up right <laughs> at all. And <laughs> it's the best way to play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you want to, yeah, you you absolutely annihilated me. So yeah, yeah, that's, that works out. But no, that one I was like, ooh, I I, I misread the again reading the victory conditions. You know, Always even important. on a quick game is definitely something that needs to be done. And, and, and it's but did you fun. have fun, Tony? Oh, I had a blast. I had right. a blast. So well, he was drinking, so I'm playing ATS. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I got kind of a question. Though. Plus, I was yeah. playing. I was playing face to face. You know, this was just after. You know, this was back in what, April. Yeah, end of April, beginning of May. So I haven't played face to face in you know two years easily, and so right. it was just fun. You know, face to face, kind of. Yeah, it was really good. So cool stuff. So we got a little far afield. That's okay. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, part of that is I don't think there was anything super interesting in the last track. The, the one, the one thing Other that was really short, which I appreciate. Yeah, that. yeah. There's a lot of dribble that I don't want to say dribble, but like tangents. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like I'm in a third grade class when you're talking about something and the kid raises his hand and you're like, "Yes," and he's like, "My dad just got a cat." Like I'm just mm. like, "Okay, we're talking about APTS, but we're talking about somebody's vacation," and so. Mm. Now, sometimes they're related because it's, you mm -hmm. know, but yeah, sometimes it's a little off. But I will say the one thing yeah. that I, I, I that I will was interested in was the uh, Utah Beach um, module. Mm. But I have questions on that mm. because it doesn't, I, it says they're good maps, but it doesn't tell me how many maps there are. So I'm like, are there maps on this? And it's actually titled Five Counter Sheets for Utah Beach. And I'm like, okay, is it just the counter sheets? But when you look at the list, it's like so many scenarios. You know, it's like, okay, it's, and this is one of our in, in general complaints about about critical hit is they're just not very open on exactly what each module comes with. But I definitely am probably going to be putting that on and, order, and ordering that uh, because it looks interesting for sure. You might want to send an email and ask if there are maps. Well. Yeah, because I looked at the right. same thing and I thought it was just counters. And then I looked and I was like, well, I talk about maps. And right. Because it's, it's a weird thing. Yeah, it's like, it's 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 called Five Sheets of Combat Counters. But then there's like, Utah Beach may be the most stunning map yet. Oh, okay, but do you get that map in the product? Because for 100 bucks, <laughs> I want the map in the so. product. The yeah. same. Right? Well, yeah. or the, the map panels. <clears throat> Let's not go there yet. <laughs> no, that's, that's another, yeah, that's another, that's, that's, that's another a, episode. That's a hot itself. take. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I I used to read all the all the Friday emailers like completely, but before really? I, had more, I had more. Yeah, when I first started getting into ATS, and I had more time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's there's some there's some interesting tidbits and some no doubt writing in there. Yeah, but yeah, it's a it's a lot of stuff that I kind of stop because it's you know a lot of stuff I'm not as interested in. So right. waiting through that to get to the, the good stuff is you know, 
the, not the not how to spend my time. But uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think people sometimes under <laughs> I don't want to say I don't know if underappreciate is the right word. Right. Yeah. Well, I think I think you know I think people's expectations around what a right. I'll call, yeah. I'll call it a customer update. Or yeah. to be as opposed to what that is. And I'm with you. I mean, there's some really interesting tidbits of information in there. But, but that's not what I want to read as part of or at least I don't want that to be the upfront part. Put that at the end as opposed to upfront. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, and that's and that's changed a little bit. He's he's sure. done about a better job in the last couple of weeks of mm-hmm. getting Definitely. that more front end. But we'll see, we'll see how it works out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm probably gonna put that on order and find out because uh, I and I'm also I'm looking for Sword and Juno Beach, but and they've got them. I just don't know if I want to put that money in quite yet for them. So, <laughs> well, I got two modules for real cheap that require the Sword and Juno, but I couldn't pass them up. It was like ten bucks. For, oh yeah, so yeah. Like what it. is it? The red, right. Mike Red and Mike Green, and I got yeah. got them for ten bucks. I'm like, this is, you know, that's, Mm -hmm. you know, they're normally 50, 60 bucks. So I was like, well, I'll just put them away. And then once I get a chance to get those other two modules, I'll get them. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, Cause I, I I have King red and operation bed stick, which is really cool, but Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think I have Omaha. I've never played it though. I think it's unpunched actually. (laughs) Oh, there we go. BW. That'd be a huge one. Yeah. That is a big, 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 big man. But, so anyway. I mean, I think the biggest the biggest thing in the last few emails and this kind of segues in our next segment, right, is the oh, EVO stuff. You beat me to that. <laughs> was yeah, like, the ATS well. evolution. I don't know if we want to do a full hot take now or just give our uh, initial impressions or just kind of mention it or whatever you guys want to do. I'm, I'm up for it. Although well, I will say we're here's what, approaching here's what, an hour. So. Yeah. Here's what, here's what I'm going to say. Cause I don't, don't want to get too, too long on this, but um, I actually have, I ordered the Evo um, mm-hmm. Hedros or bust and I actually have the basic Hedros or bust game. So um, there's two games. So you have the Evo one, which they just brought out to kind of introduce the Evo and the rules for the EVO. Um, but there's also a basic game, which is how you can kind of get started for not too much um, into ATS and kind of get kind of the, some of the things you need. Um, and I was like, hey, you know what? I've got that one. Let's compare the two. So first of all, the maps are exactly the same. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> uh, obviously, the rules are different because they're the Evo rules. So um, so if you did not get the Hedros or Bust, uh, the basic starter game, the basic game, uh, then you're, you'll be good. There's not a problem with it. Um, and then there's four scenarios in the, the basic game, not the Evo basic. Try not to get too confused on this um, <laughs> or try to make it too confused. But there's six scenarios in the Evo basic game, and four of them are the same between the two modules with a few minor differences there i've noticed there's but nothing that's major so you get two extra scenarios with the evo basic game but now i will say that the uh the basic game uh hedros or bust um the reason why i got that is because it comes with not only all the counters you need but some of the small and large counters that you are required to have to play the game as well so it's an easy way to get all the counters you need at least to start off and that's something we'll that get into it, it later on. So exactly, exactly. But yeah, I, I haven't thought... got to I haven't got to build the rules out or really dig it deep into them. But I know Evan and Mitch, you guys have looked at them. So I'm just kind of get kind of curious what your initial impressions are on that. Well, um, I'm thank you for the report on the scenarios. I was very curious to see. Like I figured it was going to be the same map, but I was I was curious if the scenarios were going to be the same or different. Yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah, there's four of the same scenarios, and then two are different. But they've tweaked the other scenarios um, slightly. Like instead of half squads, they're full squads. So there's a there's a few minor differences. Uh, and I don't know if it's something that they're like, oh, we should have done this in the first place, or if they actually did it just because it was was you know they just wanted to do it differently. Well, this is an internal question. Imagine we've talked about this quite a bit. Is you know when they change scenarios from one product version to another, is it because it's more historical, 
or for game balance or just to be changing stuff. Like it's hard to hard to know <laughs> why those changes occur. Yeah, because there's no there's never an explanation. There's no you know, one of the things I, I think critical and doesn't do super well is they don't provide errata to like the older products, right? So right. they used to do that. They actually used to do that. They had a sheet, they had a file that had all the here's all the errata for all the scenarios, here, you know, whatever. They don't do that anymore, which I think is is not not very good, not a, not just not a good practice, right? I mean, you should you should at least at least have kept the old one up. Um, it would be very nice, but uh, I think the problem is you don't see it because as we you know I put that spreadsheet up on Google at one point that says, "Hey, this product became this product became this product." Well, all those scenarios changed in between those products, but nobody said why, right? Right. And I think I think that's kind of important for people to understand. Hey, yeah, you know, we did more research; it's better this way. Or hey, we've got some feedback, and it's just more balanced this way. Or whatever the case is, I don't really care. I just want to know why did you change it, right? Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're, then, we're looking at that. Okay. Go no, ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say that the pork chop. No, not pork chop. Hill, but the talk tongue pass scenario that we looked at that it would like. It had, you know, double or half the squads on one side. It was like, went from like 20 to 10 or there was something crazy where it was a huge difference. And this just like, a, it would surely be a completely different scenario. Yeah. yeah. Somebody, somebody changed something. I mean, something, something obviously changed in between those two. So what, what was it? I mean, I want to know, right? Right. I don't, I don't want to just, well, do I need to update mine or is it okay to play this way? I mean, maybe, maybe that just gets played out and oh crap i played that scenario well geez i got over rain <laughs> you know whatever yeah i mean my take is kind of at this at this level the scale i think most of the time the research you know you can do you don't know if there's exactly you know 12 guys over there and the var gun over there but um but yeah i would be so it's not yeah i'm not so worried about it being like the perfect historical situation but since there are changes it will be nice to know if those changes were historical or were play violence or whatever because then it's just it's good like we're here for the history we're not just playing a game right uh, well so. and i mean and you know that kind of brings us right back full circle to evo is so for those of you guys who don't know evo the ats evolution whatever you know um if it's an evolution or a revolution or just whatever it is but um you know the rules so the the basic premise is you you mostly use ats rules but there are these changes that he's that that critical it's making on top of it calling calling it evo and i don't know if we again i don't know if we want to get into that now or make that a whole thing i think almost feel like we should make it a whole thing but anyway yeah we should make it a whole yeah, there. I mean, there are things like the, the percentile to hit system. I think that's probably going to be pretty cool. Um, but that's just more the geek in me who wants a little bit more defined, <laughs> you know, resolution than, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, technically, yes, if I'm rolling a D10 on the HPT, it's technically a percentile system. It's just, you know, at the time. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 So I think I like that, but there are some, there are some fundamental changes in there. And, you know, Evan and I have talked about them a little bit. Um, and Tony have talked about it a little bit, you know, and I think, and that's why I say, I think it deserves its own full treatment. So I guess this will be the cliffhanger, right? You can stay tuned and we'll talk about it next time. But um, some intriguing say, things, but the change one of the basic ways the game is played that, you know, I'm not, I'm not too sure about. So go ahead. It's hard. Well, I mean, no, so I stepping on your words, but I, I, it's, I mean, it's hard to tell without really playing it I, right. at this point with the tournaments still going on. I'm not going to, a new system that's very related. It's a little bit too hard to keep it straight. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't see there being any like fair way or legitimate way to kind of <laughs> figure it out and see, Oh yeah. Okay. These changes make sense. Or like, no, our initial instincts are right. These changes don't make sense without just, right. you know, just playing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, one, I think, one thing was, go you know, come on, you can do it. You go. Ah, well, I was just going to say, I think one of the things you mentioned was that, you know, the morale rules changed quite a bit. Yeah. And I think, I think to your point, you'd almost have to play a scenario with the old morale rules, play it again, maybe capture the die rules to see how the new morale rules would have played, you know, would it have materially yeah, changed almost, almost a statistical analysis of, yeah, this totally, it didn't make any difference, right? Or made a slight difference, which is okay. I'm all kind of a slight difference, right? or more true to, to form, whatever that means. But if it totally radically changed the game, then I'm not sure, you know, what's the, what's the reasoning behind that change? Is it, is it actually more fidel, more historical fidelity? Or is it just 
you know, you want to, I think you said it, change for change sake. Well, I think, uh, well, I totally lost my train of thought. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think part, and that's part of the, the problem too, is it's because it's so similar, you know, it's, it's in some ways fundamentally different, but in some ways so similar, and right. it's just not going to be easy to, to tease that out. Um, the only other thing I was going to add about, about Evo was, are we saying EVA? Oh, are we saying Evo? <laughs> That's a great question. I'm, I'm going to say Evo because it's shorter. But <laughs> right, exactly. Evo. 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 Uh, some people were complaining like about the counters and like the hedgerows oh, yeah. and busts, like not coming. Care. Well, yeah. I, I mean, that if you if you buy things from a critical hit, you know, that's part of the, part of the experience. It's like, well, same thing with ASL. It's not like you get right. everything you need to play a game in any product. Um, but, but yeah. There's I mean, some expectation of having some stuff, yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, we should have, we should, I'm not saying we're lowering our expectations <laughs> below what's right. reasonable, but, uh, but no, I mean, it came like, and for the product, the price was great. Like it's got the two maps, it's got mm -hmm. a bunch of German overhead counters uh, it's got Useless. the vehicles and guns you need. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So you don't need, if we're listening, you do not need overhead counters. <laughs> like there's right. no reason because there's no facing and even with facing you could use regular counters and just point them. Anyway. Well, there's, but, there's no, there's no facing and you, there's, you don't have to do the whole prone and upright using the counters. You can just use the markers. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Which it might even be a better way to do it. Right. I mean, you can use your old, your, you know, classic, we'll call them classic ATS markers. Right. Which yeah. is what I did when I was playing around with the EDO stuff. I didn't bother to punch them because I had everything I needed. So. Exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. The, so the one thing you would need is, some paratrooper, you American paratroopers. Like yes. Five nine guys are really good. I think they're with that. Yeah, so that, that, that they were clear about that on the website. That would right. not come included. So. Um, yep. so yeah, that's no, it. I agree. That's it. So, I mean, you know, I think the jury's out, right? We'll do, I think, I think I like that idea. Let's, let's, um, you know, I guess yeah, we'll do a tease. Let's couple. make the next one. Yeah, let's make the next uh, on mm -hmm. the rocks all about Evo, maybe, or at least. Uh, the majority uh, a good yeah. chunk of it right about evo and what we've learned and what we think and, and all that good stuff and our, our speculation our right exactly speculation. right yeah well, that's what people are paying for i'm paying us for to listen to this podcast <laughs> that's right <laughs> baseless speculation make all your checks payable to <laughs> cool so i think on that note i mean maybe we wrap we call it good and yep i think so awesome well thank you boys um Hopefully you uh, feel better, Evan. Oh, yeah, and, I feel uh, great now. This, is, this was rejuvenating. Yes, yeah, nice. <laughs> and for the rest of you all, hopefully you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. We won't stop. We won't quit. Till we hit it. Hit it and crit. Hit me three times. Hit me four times. Now crit it.